bathrooms. Um, I'm Ranger Megan again. Um, we're doing this from the Honey Island Nature Center on um, Honey Island State Park. Again, this is a map. Um, if you guys are tuning in from South Carolina, welcome. If you're tuning in from wherever, welcome. But this is a map of the state. We are way out of here. Um, and we're, again, broadcasting from the Nature Center with our friends. Uh, welcome. We're going to kind of do an impromptu reptile program. Uh, kind of learn some stuff about reptiles. We've got Buddy, the terrapin here. We've got Marigold, our corn snake. We've got Herbie, the rat snake. And over here we have Bonnie. So while you're tuning in, make sure you stick around the whole video because we're going to feed the snakes and we're going to feed Bonnie. So don't leave me. All right. Um, and we'll go ahead and start again. My name is Ranger Megan. Uh, we'll start with Buddy. So I'll come around so you guys can see her a little closer. This is Buddy, our Diamondback Terrapin. Um, so reptiles, when we think of reptiles, um, reptiles are cold-blooded, which means uh, they have no way to kind of alter their heat. So when you put on a jacket, um, you can change how hot or cold you are when you put on a jacket, usually because you're cold. Um, Buddy can't do that. If Buddy put on a jacket, uh, she would still remain the same temperature. So if it's 70 degrees in here, you put a, a jacket on Buddy, she'd just look funny. Um, she does have a little costume though that we put on her. She walks around with. But um, again, the turtle shells. A lot of people don't know this, um, but the top is called a carapace, and you can actually see her backbone. Um, when you scratch anything on her shell, she can feel all that. Uh, turtles can feel um, when you scratch their shell because their shell is just made of, out of keratin what your hand or your fingernails and your hair is made out of. So Buddy can feel all that on her skin. If you flip her over, show her her tummy. This is her plastron. So we're getting into some big turtle words there. But um, that's a little bit, um, or pretty much the gist of Buddy, her body plan. So Buddy's a diamondback terrapin, which uh, you'll find these guys in the salt marsh. Um, and anybody guess how old Buddy is? Let's get some guesses in there. Sarah's going to interactively say, what you, what you got, Sarah? Nothing yet. How old is she? Well, let's guess. No cheaters. If you know how old she is. No guesses? No guesses. No guesses. Somebody did ask what she eats, though. What does she eat? Does Buddy eat shrimp? Um, we have to be careful. Buddy gets to exercise around. Um, so when we get her out to exercise, she usually looks for things on the floor. Um, so we have to be careful of that. But she likes to eat shrimp. Um, she eats fish. Um, she eats vitamins since she is a little older. Um, she has to get her vitamins just like everybody else. So, so I did give you a, a little cheat there. She is older. We yeah. have a couple guesses. We have three years, nine years, 23, 29, 7, 25, 25, 26, 10, 3, and 10. All right, good guesses. She is, or actually she will be 27. So that is um, pretty old for a terrapin. But he's special though, if you look in really close. Um, Diamondback terrapins usually have pretty impressive claws. She doesn't have any claws. When she was a little baby, um, she was found on the beach, and uh, she was found without nail beds. So she's kind of, well, she's got one there. You can see it real close. And she's got one on her back leg there. But we take care of her, and she's been here, oh gosh, buddy, what do you think? Maybe 15, 20 years. So she's an old resident. So good guesses, guys, good guesses. Um... But diamondback terrapins, again, are salt marsh turtles, uh, so they like brackish water. Your other turtles that you might find around here would be your yellow belly sliders, which are freshwater turtles, um, and then maybe some painted turtles and whatnot. All right, buddy. We're going to say goodbye. Say bye, buddy. 
and we're going to get a couple snakes out. If your snake's squeamish, I'm going to try to change that. <laughs> Hopefully. We're not around here. We try not to. All right, the first snake we're going to get out. Uh, by the way, guys, uh, we're going to save or try to save all questions uh, till the end. I'll give you guys a question and answer section or segments rather. Um, because I can't really see the questions either. Sarah's helping me. So, um, if your snake's squeamish, sorry. Um, but this is Marigold. This is our corn snake. Let me jump out here so I can get closer. Uh, so corn snakes, uh, why do you think they're named corn snakes? Why? Um, do they eat corn? No, they don't eat corn. But they like to eat things that eat corn, which would be mice. So... What we got today, hopefully she'll eat for you guys. We're gonna feed her a mouse, what she likes to eat. Another reason they're called corn snakes, if you look on the bottom, they kind of have that corn checkered pattern. So that nice Indian corn looking pattern. Uh, she's actually got really nice colors to her. So if you were to go on one of our trails and this snake was to be on the trail, hopefully, um, or her main goal is for you to just walk on by and kind of miss her. So hopefully she'd look like some leaves or pine straw and hopefully you would just kind of go about your way and go keep hiking. So these are constrictors and they eat mice by constricting them. However, today, she's got it easy. Woo! <laughs> little high tail in there. Girl, girl, do you want a mouse, ma'am? So we can't make these guys eat on commands. <laughs> so it might be a little, uh, she's camera shy. She's Facebook shy. All right. That's all right. We'll try Herbie. Herbie usually doesn't miss a meal. So you guys say bye to Marigold. And the tongue thing, if you guys know about snakes, um, this is how they smell. So if you see her tongue going crazy, um, she has a forked tongue so she can get as much surface area as possible. Um, she brings her tongue back to an organ in her mouth called a Jacobson's organ and it kind of tells her what she's smelling. So, if you're a human, you have nothing to worry about because you don't smell like a mouse. If you do, you better wash your hands. All right, so now we got this big guy. I'm sure if you guys have visited the Nature Center before, you've seen this fella. This is Herbie. Herbie is our yellow rat snake, so that kind of gives it away on what he eats. Um, he eats rats as well. Today, he'll get a frozen mouse. Hopefully, they'll want it. Let's see. Stage fright. You don't want it? Uh-oh. We have more stage fright. Come on, bud. Well, you guys can get a good look at his tongue there, kind of sniffing away. And again, these guys are constrictors, just like corn snakes. They're actually very closely related to corn snakes, um, almost cousins, but these guys can get about six feet. They're excellent climbers. So when we say arboreal snakes, I'll ask you guys, what is Arbor Day? Um, it is a day we celebrate trees. So Kirby's an arboreal snake, which means he's a tree snake. So he likes to hang out in trees and other things that live in trees um, would be birds. Kirby loves birds. Um, he likes to eat birds and bird eggs. We'll see if he eats that mouse later. I know somebody that won't miss a meal for you guys. That's this lady right here. You guys having a good time so far? Learning a lot, I hope. 
I hope so. There will be a quiz. <laughs> no quiz. You're not in school. Well, you kind of are. This is, this is your reptile segment. <laughs> so this is Bonnie. This is one of our American alligators. Uh, Clyde is in his cage. Um, but Bonnie is, uh, she's going to be six this year. Why is she so small? I know you guys are going to ask that question. Um, so we got her from the Savannah River Ecology Lab in Aiken, South Carolina, uh, where both of her parents are nuisance alligators. So when we say nuisance, that means um, her parents probably went up to somebody for food at a pond or um, something like that, being a nuisance. And um, unfortunately with those, whoo, she's Facebook shy too, um, you have to euthanize them. Um, and they didn't want to do that, so they bred them for research. Uh, so that's why we got Bonnie. And when they're in captivity, uh, they grow a little slower. Uh, so in the wild, they grow about a foot a year until they reach five feet. Um, in captivity, um, they haven't grown that fast. Uh, I got them, maybe, if you're looking at her tail, maybe that size. So they were probably maybe five inches or so. Um, how can we tell it's Bonnie? That's another question we get. If you look, Sarah will zoom in on her feet. She's missing a toe. She has a notch on her tail. And she's a little smaller. And I'll show. I'll tell you guys a secret. How many we got watching now? 482. All right. So you guys got to keep the secret. So when you're looking at an alligator from a safe distance, we don't want to be really close to them. Um, if you look at them in the ponds, usually you see this is all you see of them. Um, when you see the nose to the eyes, whatever that measurement is in inches, is usually how big the alligator is. In so anytime, um, say you see them in the pond and this is a, maybe a six inch gap, um, you have probably a little six foot gator. So it's, it's held true to any gator I've kind of measured. And then of course people are interested about the teeth. Let's see if she'll open today. Say, ah, I'm going to the dentist. There are little chompers in there. Oh yeah. Oh, she might be a little shy. <laughs> so that mouth right now probably has around 15 pounds of pressure to close. Um, so it would still hurt if you got bit, um, for sure. But the adult alligators have about two to 3,000 pounds. And when you see those crazy people that tie them up on TV, um, they can do that because they only have about four pounds of opening pressure. Um, which is pretty crazy for these guys. So there's another view of her mouth. Next we'll talk about the eyes. She has beautiful eyes. Um, those eyes can see 320 degrees. So if I flip her around and put you guys on my back, you guys see her eye back there? She can still see you. She's got a good view of you, so don't, don't think she can't. These guys are pretty fast. Um, they're known as ambush predators, um, which they're built for because they have their nose on the top so they can kind of sneak up on things. So what do these guys eat? These guys will eat mice today. Like I told you, she won't miss a meal. So I can guarantee you Bonnie will eat. And she's got a little mouse for her food. All right. So Bonnie, she's pretty smart. She's actually learned some things. Uh, she has to tap the tongs to get her food. Ooh, good girl. Yeah, so we call that target feeding. So she's a pretty good target feeder. And you guys might see bubbles coming out of her eyes. Sarah can zoom in on that a little bit. You guys see the bubbles? Uh, when she gets um, a mouth or any sort of food in her mouth, the sinus pressure in the cavity um, creates those bubbles. Breakfast time. What did you guys have for breakfast? Hopefully not mine. Uh-uh. You going to say hi to your friend? Say no, I want another mouth. You guys want to hear one more? Actually, we got two more. 
So again, if you guys are just tuning in, the bubbles, um, it's from her, the pressure in her sinus cavity when she eats. Can you pose for them? Can you pose? Oh yeah, good girl. Oh, I watch your fingers around here. Ooh, hello. <laughs> All right, one more. If you guys didn't get to see, make sure you tune in if you're listening to me um, and you, you weren't paying attention first. This is the last mouth. Here, ma'am. Oh, yeah. She's full now. Good girl. Some good bubbles there. And the cool thing about gators, um, again, we're talking about reptiles. Um, so they're cold blooded. Um, they also conform to the temperatures around them. Uh, so it's about 70 degrees in here, so body probably about 70 degrees, which um, they usually, like I said, don't miss a meal, but she'll eat any time. Um, if you look on her back, maybe Sarah can get an overhead view. Um, <laughs> woo! Uh, these, all these on her back, these are actually bony plates called osteoderms, um, which enable her to kind of regulate heat throughout her body. So they act like little solar panels so she can regulate heat. We'll get one more good view of the gator, and then we'll do some questions. Oh, she's about maybe like uh, two and a half feet. So when they reach um, three feet, we have to give them back to the ecology lab in Aiken, um, and then we get two new ones. So um, if you're if you're gonna ask if I have been bit, yes. Um, I used to tell people it felt like a kitten. Um, it does not. It hurts. A lot worse um, and they do like little gator rubs she closes her eyes like a little puppy oh yeah <laughs> all right so we'll keep Clyde out for a little bit um, this is your time um, we give you guys time in the, the show to ask questions um, if you have a question about the program um, about these guys I will get the snakes out again if you want um, I can get Buddy out again, uh, but if you have a question about the program, I would be happy to answer it about animals. Uh, if you have a statewide question, like about campgrounds, cabins, stuff like that, um, just ask it on that little feed, and uh, they'll be happy to answer it for you guys. But um, the cabins and uh, campgrounds are still open, all the outside facilities. Um, so yeah, all, those, all that stuff is open for you guys to enjoy. Um, that's why we're kind of doing this for you guys, so uh, you can still come in and look at our animals, because we still gotta take care of these guys. Um, do we have any questions? How long do all of them live? How long do all of them live? That's a good question. So the gators, uh, they can live to be anywhere from 60 to 80. Um, the snakes, probably, uh, Herbie's in his teens, we think, so maybe um, in their 30s. And buddy, terrapins can live a long time. Um, not like sea turtles, which are like 100 years, but um, terrapins can probably live anywhere from 70 to 80 years, but that's a lot. So in the wild, probably talking maybe like 30, 40 years. You got an escape <laughs> Someone asked if they could see another snake. Another snake? Besides these two? Um, let's see. Um, we have a king snake, but do you guys know why we can't hold a king snake right now? Any guesses? Do we have any guesses? What do king snakes eat? Snakes. 
So far, no guesses. No guesses. So, king snakes, we have other snakes, but um, right now they're, they're a little small. But these are the main guys that we bring out. But we have a king snake named Louie. But we can't bring a king snake out because we've just held these guys. And king snakes eat other snakes. So, if we went and held Louie, um, um, he, he might give me a nice bite because I smell like Kirby. Any more questions? We have asking if this is Hunting Island. This is Hunting Island, yep. Again, I'll do a station identification. Um, you guys are at Hunting Island State Park. Um, we're the very southernmost park in the state. Um, and you're at the Nature Center. So we're, you're hanging out with all the, the cool kids in the Nature Center right now. We have two questions wanting to know how long a bonnie will grow. Bonnie, um, since her growth is stunted, uh, she probably will grow about five to six feet and top out there. So um, usually female alligators will be about nine to ten feet, uh, where males will be a little bigger, around maybe like 12 to 13. Um, so because she's been in captivity, um, she'll kind of stay little. Um, not that little though, but she will stay in captivity. Um, these alligators are known now as educational advocates, so they will never ever be able to be released in the wild. We have someone asking how we got all these snakes. So all these snakes, um, all of our animals in here are either handicapped or they cannot be released into the wild. Um, if you guys saw Buddy, our terrapin, let me get her out again. If you're just joining us, uh, welcome guys. We're kind of at the end of the show, but um, we'll, we'll take out what we need to. If you haven't seen them. Again, this is Buddy. This is our Diamondback Terrapin. Um, so Buddy, like I told y'all her story, the gators um, are kind of on loan. Uh, the snakes can't be released, some of them, because they've been in captivity their whole lives. Um, but we do have a terrapin program. Uh, if we get baby terrapins that are injured, uh, we kind of grow them up to maybe about cookie size. Um, and then we release them back in the salt marsh. Uh, so we kind of have a terrapin head start program. How fast can alligators run? So in short bursts, alligators can run maybe 20 to 25 mile an hour. Um, we do have questions about if they can, um, or if they chase you. Um, the only reason an alligator would really chase you is if you're near her nest, which, uh, please don't do that. Um, because that would be really scary for both you, especially, and the gator. Um, but an alligator usually has no reason to chase you, um, unless you're really close to the pond. Say if you're walking your dog. Um, alligators aren't that smart to say, oh, that's his dog, Fido, so I can't eat him. Um, the alligator just sees it as a, a prey item. So for you guys, um, if you're close to the pond, which I hope you're not, um, observe these guys from a distance. Um, they're really fun to watch, um, but make sure you stay safe. Um, don't walk your dogs or you near the ponds. And always, um, if you see a big pond, Kind of just think there's one in there, just to to uh, make yourself feel better, I guess. How many reptiles do you have? Oh gosh, uh, I think we have seven snakes. We've got a toad. We've got two gators. Um, so with all this uh, everything being closed, we still got to feed these guys. Um, so that's what Sarah and I do. Uh, we feed the animals, uh, kind of clean up everything and uh, make sure they stay healthy and fed uh, while we do the same. So we have, let's see, yellow belly slider, two box turtles, buddy, uh, three terrapins right now. Um, so we're gonna actually, we're gonna let buddy crawl around on the floor right now. I'm gonna go that get uh, JC turtle. JC turtle's a turtle this big. You guys are gonna go crazy when you see her, hold on. Intermission. Think of any more questions. I'll be right back. All right, here she is. This is JC Turtle. 
This is the same turtle species. Cue the Oz. <laughs> She's very tiny. This is the one we're taking care of right now. Um, so she's probably a month old, maybe two months. Um, just like us, they have an umbilical scar. She doesn't have that anymore. Uh, she lost it. And when they're little, they have an egg tooth. And she doesn't have that anymore. So we think she's probably two months or so. But um, this is how big they grow. This is um, an adult female. So this is about tops growing wise. The males are a little smaller. We'll do a couple more questions and then we gotta... How yeah. can a snake swallow a large animal? So a snake, we'll go back to the, the snakes. Snakes can actually unhinge their jaws. Oh, we got one out for you guys. Actually, she let herself out. Um, so if you look at her mouth, she won't do it because she will try and feed her again. They can unhinge their jaws and swallow it down using muscle. Are you going to eat it, huh? She's thinking about it. And it's really hard to have a staring contest with a snake because you're going to lose because they don't blink. <laughs> they don't have eyelids. I've tried. I've tried staring contests. Well, I thought maybe we'd get to show you guys. She's not hungry today, but they can uh, unhinge their jaws and kind of force it down with muscle. And their skin's really stretchy, which allows the, the prey item to just go down the hatch. And they do have teeth. Um, they're kind of sandpapery. Uh oh. Whoops. Mouse down. All right, one more question. What kind of poisonous snakes are in South Carolina? Oh, we have six species. So we have the coral snake, we have the pygmy rattlesnake, timber rattlesnake, diamondback rattlesnake, uh, we have a copperhead, and we have a water moccasin. So um, it's very difficult to kind of tell a venomous snake from a non-venomous snake um, because you have to get close. Um, and if you guys um, see one in your yard or outside, please don't go up to it and touch it. Um, the only ones you can really touch are these here at the Nature Center. Um, so if you see one, unfortunately, to see if it's venomous, you have to get really close, which I don't condone. Um, <laughs> so just um, usually the venomous snakes have a really big... Um, Right here, they'll have a really big head where the venom is stored. But just be safe, especially this time of year, snakes are starting to come out um, and kind of get warmed up. So, all right. Um, I think that's about it for our little segment here. Um, we appreciate you guys watching again. Um, this was at Hunting Island. Uh, so we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned a lot. And we are going to see you later. You guys stay safe. Wash your hands. Stay well. And we'll see you later.